Hi, today I'm going to start by explaining what is server-side rendering and then we will see how Nextjs works and how it is making it easier to develop UGS applications. Then we we'll start on Vicing Max 3 to see major architecture improvements and the projects that are coming alongside with it. And finally, we'll see the release plan. So, first let's see what is server-side rendering and why it should be important for us. Basically, most of the websites that we use and visit every day are server-side rendered applications. The way that these websites are working is that when we enter an address in the browser that is sent to the server, server processes the request and then generates the markup that is necessary to display the content. This content is then sent back to the browser and the browser can immediately display the content to user. And then in the background, based on the resources that are linked to the page, can attempt to download them, such as images or JavaScript assets that are necessary to make the page responsive and interactive, such as sliders. The way that the websites work is that most of the logic is inside the server side. This means that the browser is mostly responsible for only displaying the content. These websites are fast because as soon as we get a response, we can show it to the user. Also, it's easy for search engines to crawl these websites because they can get the content and see what's inside the page. And there are lots of frameworks out there that are designed to create such applications. And writing the code for them is easier because we write the same backend code and the code that is necessary for the presentation layer using the same language. Frameworks like Laravel or WordPress provide this possibility. But these web applications have their own issues as well. Even though the first page load is quite fast, when we enter a website and try to navigate to different pages, we have to do the same process all over and again. Like when we are going from home page to another page and when we click on a link, we have to again wait for the server that generates us the necessary markup. And then when we get the markup, we can load the JavaScript assets one more time to make the page more one more time interactive. This leads to the second thing. Because most of the things are happening in the server side rather than device, users don't feel like a native application. And this also means that this application cannot operate independently. And when we are offline, we cannot use the website anymore. Also, for each making pages interactive, it usually ends up with writing duplicate logic, such as form validation. After once write it in a language that is designed for servers such as PHP and once in JavaScript. So, single page applications was born here. The idea was that if we can move entire logic from server to the browser, we can have all dynamic possibilities into the browser and create a real application. This way, we are not longer dependent on the server. The way that these web applications are written is that server always responds to the same blank HTML file that contains links to various JavaScript resources that are necessary to create a page. When these JavaScript resources are downloaded in the browser and executed, they start matching the route in the browser address bar, and based on that, they render the page. Sometimes it requires downloading more data from server, such as JSON responses. Single page applications solve many problems. They make application a website looking like a real application, which can operate offline and is no longer so dependent on the server. And the only thing that for backend we have to now implement is just API endpoints that respond to JSON. But this pattern introduced some new limitations and problems. First of all, with this design, JavaScript is now essential, and a browser without JavaScript cannot display anything. This means that also for search engines, they need to not only download the pages, but execute every necessary JavaScript to just see what's behind every page. Also, these applications are not fast for initial server and initial rendering, because first we have to wait for an HTML file, then download all JavaScript assets, then execute them, and during execution, sometimes it involves getting more resources from server to, for data, and finally show something to the user. 
So, even though it was great, uh, it introduced some problems. Uh, this leads to the next thing, which is called a new, a new server side rendering. The idea is that if you could move the logic from server to the client as a JavaScript, and if we can run JavaScript in the server side, why not for initial rendering do the same code in the server side? This way, as soon as user makes a request to the server for a page, they can see the response. So the page is immediately visible, and in the background, we can start translating a uh, server side render application to a single page application. This stage is called hydration, which means that running the same logic that happened once in the server in the client to match them and then convert the legacy application to application that is fully running in the browser and is now independent of the server. And for the next navigations, we no longer make requests to the server. We can all we can have all we have to do is to compute the next markup markups into the browser using JavaScript file. Something I need to emphasize here is that service are rendered applications that are created using frameworks like Vue or Nice are basically simple applications that are enhanced with an initial step for getting immediate HTML response, which is running the same logic in the server. Single page applications solve many problems and open new era for websites and web because with them we could have a really neat application like experience for users, but they also added a layer of complexity. With the rising of these frameworks, now we have more formats that are not understandable for the browsers, but we use them for creating single page applications such as TypeScript, SAS, or Vue single file components. There is an additional step called compiling using frameworks like Webpack to trans translate these assets to the formats that browsers can understand, which is JavaScript and CSS. With the rise of server-side rendering, we now have even one more issue. Not only once, we have to build these assets twice, once for the format that is usable for the browser, and once in the format that is usable for Node.js. Also for writing the code, now we have more considerations. Even though both are JavaScript, the API that is possible in the browser is more advanced than the server. In the browser, we have access to objects like window to track and see the size of the browser, for example. But now if we want to compile the same code to the server side and run it in Node.js, we no longer access to the window. So for a server side rendered application, we have more considerations now. Also, weight isolation. When we are running a code in the browser, each tab is isolated. So if we have a global variable that is keeping authentication state, we are sure that this is just for the current visitor. But when we are going to run the same code back to the server, now uh, we have a problem because multiple users use the same server to render the pages. This way, we do not have access to a global variable anymore and we need to create isolated context for each user to avoid sharing the state between them. This leads to the next step, which arising of frameworks like Nux. The idea behind Nux is that we can always leverage modern technology and use all possibilities such as server side rendering without involving in a complex setup to create such applications and maintain them. For creating Nux.js application, all we have to do is to define and write the real code that's really needed for creating a website, such as components, pages for router structure, plugins, middleware store for views, and of course the configuration for customizing every aspect. Then, by installing Nux package and using either Nux view or Nux div, then we start the process. Nux uses an internal template engine to generate and write the rest of the code for us on the fly. This means that other than necessary code for the project, the rest of the code for creating router, for creating store, and integrating with the client and server side is generated, and we no longer need to worry about it. Then, Nux uses some optimized Webpack configurations to convert 
this source code into the assets that are usable and understandable for server side and the, and the browser. These assets then are transferred to an internal compiled card like server. Next server is responsible for multiple things, such as handling and serving static assets that are usable for client side for single page application stage, server middleware that are required for development such as hot module replacement, and the most important part, which is server renderer. Server renderer loads the assets from previous step for Node.js and renders them into the packages that make server side rendering possible. Then we can directly use this server to serve for requests for users, both in production and development. But there is one more possibility with Next. Using Next Generate, we can use the same server and same build pipeline to create a server side render application, but by crawling and pre computing every possible schema response for users, we can store them statically in the directory. Then in production, we can have server-side rendering without a real Node.js server. This makes less cost for us. Something special about Nux is that even though it's making life much easier by isolating and hiding the complexity, every part of internals is customizable. This means that our hands are never tied. We can customize everything through configuration for templates that are generated for the build step and its configuration, and also customize it on server. It's even possible to replace some parts, such as builder or server. Okay, Next was great, but let's see what are differences in Next 3. For creating a Next 3 powered application, all we have to do is the same. We have to write the necessary code for the application. Now we can even make it easier by just having the same single applet view file. Then, by installing Next and using either Next Dev or Next Build again, Next generates the rest of the code for us on the fly based on the template. With Next 3, not only Webpack, we have Webpack 5 and Wheat to convert this source code into the assets that are usable for server and client side. The major difference between Next 2 and Next 3 is that there is a new package called Nitro. Nitro is the next generation of the next server and is a disappearing server layer. Nitro wraps the assets from the previous step with a minimal rendering logic and using a scroll up step converts it into a standalone and portable code. This portable code can be running for development into Node.js worker threads and for production targeting environments such as serverless environments or even non-Node.js environments like Cloudflare workers for rendering next on edge. Nitro step allows more possibilities, such as now we can have, because now we don't have an opinion in our server, we can integrate server side rendering part of the next with other frameworks and custom solutions. Also, with Nitro, we can have additional targets based on its requirements and modify the generated code for it. Also, with Nitro, we have a new feature called API Routes. This means that not only we can write front-end code with Nux, Nitro bundles the front-end code with the API Routes that are necessary to handle the backend logic. Okay, so let's see what we can expect from Nux3 and the packages that are going to be released alongside with it. The, next, the first package that is going to be out is the Nitro server. Nitro is a disappearing server layer that is powered in Next 3, but is backward compatible with Next 2. This means that as soon as Nitro is out, we can use it for every Next application. Nitro provides features such as first class servers to the software, rendering on edge, and integration with custom frameworks. Nitro is much more optimized with faster request per second and lower latency, and supporting a new feature called API Routes. The next package that is out is Nux CLI. Nux CLI is next generation of Nux that can be globally installed. It can power Nux Dev tools. Nux CLI is usable for both Nux 2 and Nux 3 and is coming with a new generator engine. This generator engine can replace Create Next app 
to generate templates such as files, configuration, or even add modules on demand. This means that after a result, you can still modify the project using CLI commands. For Nux3 ecosystem, a new package is coming called NuxKit. NuxKit is extracting part of the Nux core and module container to create cross compatible, cross version compatible Nux modules. The format of new modules is ensuring that module authors should not be worried even anymore about which version of Nux is being used on, so we don't have different versions of modules or different versions of Nux anymore. Also, Nux module kit provides new utilities for an easier creative creation of modules and a new metadata format for modules. This metadata then can be used for generating auto generating documentation and integrating with CLI to install modules with one command. And most importantly, Nux3 itself. Nux3 is coming with a refresh from ground up V3 app template and composable utilities like use async data, coming with new version of Webpack 5, which is much faster using hard, hard source cache and with much smaller code core because the mass of the parts is decoupled and moved to the next kit and next server and find multi-app support. All is great, when we can expect them. The good news is that most of the packages are already prepared for alpha testing. In this quarter, we are opening Nux to a limited set of early testers to gather feedback and find issues. In the next quarter of the year, we prepare documentation, development kit, and resources for contribution to finally make Nux3 and other packages open source. And this year, we expect to make risk candidates and stable versions of Nux3 and the rest of the packages. Thank you for your attention, and I hope this content was useful for you. I hope you enjoyed the rest of the conference. Bye.